if you're pointing to an area that you can climb and hold down shift, you get the idea. Holding down control will give you crosshairs without automatically drawing your gun. You won't draw your gun until once you press to fire and he'll raise it and then fire once. You can now also tell any unit under your command to be firing in one specific direction if they see an enemy. I say any unit under your command because you can now also do that with allied soldiers. The game will at times require you to hold a certain position as enemies rush at you. You can now also actually go into buildings and see underwater and such and inside the buildings you can have the soldier standing at a window, you know, aiming with whatever gun you've given them and again fire at any enemy they see out there. This takes you to a nice variety of different locations and you're not only fighting Nazis this time but also the Japanese. And now that you can go underwater there'll also be some enemies underwater. For example, there's a level at the Amazon River and there are like piranhas I think and there's a level at the North or South Pole and there are like penguins and there might also be polar bears or something. And the enemies are now not only standing guard or patrolling, some are like relaxing or you know looking at plants or whatever. There are a few bugs and weird occurrences in this one though. For example, if you use the spy in a general uniform to distract a patrol and you then take out one of the members of the patrol while the other one shouldn't be looking, the others will sort of notice and it's, it's a little weird. Basically if you don't take out the entire patrol with one blow, you might as well not touch them at all and just avoid them. Unless of course you are just gunning them down for whatever reason. There are a couple of training levels and then 10 straight levels and each level also has like a bonus level if you collect all the pieces of a puzzle, like a jigsaw puzzle. So there's essentially 20 levels and all of them are fun and memorable. Never feels repetitive. By the way, the inventory thing now also means that you can raid, you know, knocked out or killed enemies for uniform and weapons, ammo, and you can also look like inside cupboards and what have you inside houses for stuff that you can then carry around and use at the appropriate time. The Green Beret can now climb up poles. The Green Beret can now climb up poles and climb across wires to other poles and such and thus get from one area to another even if the path is blocked. The driver gets to be a lot more useful because he's now got this trap. It's basically a wire it's basically a wire. You start at one place, you drag it off to another. The first soldier that walks through it is knocked out and then you have to set it again to use it. And he's now also the one who uses the, the bear trap kind of thing. I think the sapper had it in the first one. And he can now also throw sleeping gas grenades, though these are very rare, so use them wisely, and Molotov cocktails. This one also has three new characters not available in any of the other games well, two and a half, so to speak, with the half being Whisk the Dog, who, in addition to also having a small inventory, can also run a limited distance away from your commandos and bark. And if he just runs past enemies, sometimes they'll also, you know, look in his direction as he runs past. And they're not going to do anything about him because he's just a dog. <laughs> Your commandos have dog whistles, so if you want, your commandos get dog whistles, so if you want to transfer whiskey from one commando's care to another, just have that character, you know, use the dog whistle and whiskey will run straight to that one. Which might attract attention to it, but, you know, that passes. The commandos that can carry bodies can also carry whiskey, or at least one of them anyway, one of the new ones, the thief. The thief can hide in any area small enough to, like a bed or a pile of junk. He can scale almost anything you can think of. He can steal by sneaking up right behind an enemy and then pickpocket him, basically. Obviously he can't steal like the uniform, the gun, or any ammo, but he can lift a pack of cigarettes off them, or if they have keys, you know, the loose stuff in their pockets. 
having him climb buildings and enter through the windows, oh yes, he can do that too, is a lot of fun. And in general, it's very entertaining to play around with all these new features. Anyway, the last one... Anyway, the last new commando is Natasha, who's like a female version of the spy, only she doesn't really dress as a Nazi or something, she's more like... She dresses like a civilian of the area. This one sort of has a storyline at points, and where one mission ends will be where another begins. Everyone can now swim and dress up as enemies, but in the water only the diver can stay for as long as he wants, provided he's put in the scuba gear. All in all, this is definitely the most open of them all, and probably overall the best one. Though it is easier than the first in its mission pack, it's still challenging, and it's still more... F it's still challenging, and it is more fun to try to find the right solution instead of just taking complete advantage of all the freedom. And that brings us to the last one, Commandos 3, Destination Berlin. This is where it completely embraced the action orientation that the second one sort of started to lean towards, and it's not a good thing. I would say that this is tougher than the second one, but it's also much less fun. The game is now sort of a schoolyard bully, constantly pushing you, and no matter what you're doing, just keeps on pushing you until you complete a mission. At which point it starts over, pushing you and pushing you and pushing you for the next mission. Maybe they felt that the second one wasn't fast-paced enough. I'm not necessarily against the idea that a guerrilla combat game like this should be relatively fast-paced. But here it's just more frustrating than anything else. There are several levels where there aren't alarms at all. And some of the ones that do have alarms have the Nazis that come in response to it acting kind of weird. This one has like three campaigns taking place in different regions of the world where World War II raged. But the missions are very poorly connected to one another. It feels like they weren't entirely done writing out the overall plot before they just had to get to making the game. In general, it feels kind of rushed. There are enemy soldiers that are using weapons that they shouldn't be. I don't remember exactly what it is. It's on IMDb in the goof section, I think. As far as I remember, these two forces were using the same weapons. I think it was the Japanese forces that were using the weapons that we recognize as the Nazi weapons of all three games. This has levels that you might recognize from, you know, history and such, like the level where you engage in a sniper duel in that square in Russia. Think enemy at the gates. And then it has, you know, the landing at D-Day, straight out of Saving Private Ryan. I admit that these are potentially cool ideas for levels, but it really just feels like attention grabbing. It's something they can advertise it with, or hope that, you know, word of mouth will spread about, oh man, you get to be part of, you know, D-Day. And you get to snipe at Harris, but they forgot to make these levels good. I mean, even if it had made sense that there'd be commando squads at those particular locations at those particular times, which it doesn't, they just feel like poor imitations of stuff that was good in the second one. It has nothing to do with guerrilla combat. One thing about the third one that is kind of cool, but also just further proves my point that they're going too much for an action kind of thing, is that the Green Beret can now pick up an M60 and walk around with it, you know, think Full Metal Jacket. The game also only has, I don't remember if it's 10 or 12 levels, it's way too little, and you can complete the entire thing in a day, maybe two. And I'm not even saying, like, if you're an expert on this, I'm saying it won't take you any longer because the game won't let you stand still. I mean, if you start playing this and you don't complete it, it's probably going to be because you just could not get into it, and I can't blame you. But yeah, this is where the series started to lose some of its edge. I think it has to do with that it wasn't the exact same person who made the first couple who made the third one. I'm not sure. With that said, it's not a terrible game. It's just not as good as the first two or the mission pack to the first one. Now that I think about it, I think that Thief is in the third one. But anyway, 